Hello, it is a bubble. This, in my previous video, which you may or may not have watched, I looked at how I could test if these two circles are overlapping. It's not just about the math to look at if circles are overlapping. While that's interesting, of course, uh, the whole point of this was really to look at an object-oriented sort of uh, technique for how I might write code that just checks if any bubble intersects any other bubble. So I could say if bubble one intersects bubble two, and if I had bubble four and bubble three, or bubble cat, bubble dog, it, the, so many possibilities. But what I want to look at in this video is what if instead of two separate variables, <laughs> I have an array of bubbles. Maybe there are many of them, some of which are overlapping, some of which are not. How do I check? How do I check if, let's say I call this bubble, bubble A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, I just had to go through them all. This bubble A, I have to check, is bubble A intersecting B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, blah, blah, blah. is bubble B, I have to check if bubble B is intersecting any of them. How do I check if every bubble is intersecting every other bubble? Whew. Okay, let's look at that. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to change this program to have an array of bubbles. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create maybe just 10 bubbles to start with. Bubbles index i equals a new bubble. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give them random locations and maybe a random size. And I'm going to have them kind of small-ish. Um, and then I'm going to make those bubble objects. I'm going to comment this out here. And I'm now going to say, I'm going to look at, oh, oh, oh. I don't know if I should do this in this video. Oh, I got to do this in a separate video. I'm going to make a separate video, which you can go back and look at. But there is a way, <laughs> a new way. So ah, this is a bad idea, but I'm doing, going through it anyway. Right? Normally, I would write this code. And I would just say bubbles index i um, show bubbles i uh, move. So let's run this right now. I'm going to get rid of this. Boom. So there we have all of my bubbles moving, showing and moving, showing and moving. I just want to say, and I, I will make another video about this specifically, that I've been using this new loop that's also part of ES6 version of JavaScript where I could just say for b of bubbles, b.show, b.move. So these are exactly the same thing. Let's just hope how to do this every video while we're here, while you're here with me. Maybe you don't want to click and watch it. Um, this is this idea that I can, uh, I, I want to iterate over every element of the array, and every element of the array can be addressed by its index, which is typically why I might have a counter like i to count through all the index values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But it's such a common operation to do something to every element of an array. And in fact, there are lots of other ways that I'm going to show you later that you can even do more with this, that I can just make a variable be uh, called B, you know, this can be anything, cat of bubbles. The point is, this is every uh, single, this is saying for every element in bubbles, put that element in this variable and then do some stuff and then go do the next one. So, you can see it's the same program. The reason why I don't always use this is sometimes I want to only look at certain parts of the array. I need the index value. Sometimes I need to move things around in the array, delete them. But in this case, this is going to make our life a little bit easier. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going with it. Going with it. Whew, okay, where am I? Still in this video. So let's, here we go. Now, I have all of those bubbles. How do I know to check if each one is intersecting every other one? Now, here's the thing. Let's, let's think about this. I got, I, let's pretend for a second that there's just one one important bubble, which is a separate bubble. So I'm going to say something like, let uh, uh, <laughs> to call it uh, kitty. No, puppy, unicorn, rainbow, unicorn. There is a unicorn bubble. 
and it's, I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in the uh, center of the window, and I'm actually going to do a silly thing where I allow myself to just control it with the mouse. Let's make sure this works right. Ooh, where'd that? Oh, and I've got to also. This is what am I doing here? Lost my mind, but I've got to show and move. I, there's a point to what I'm doing. It's going to make sense in a minute. <laughs> Stay with me here. So you can see, look at this. Look at this bubble that I'm moving around. There is one separate bubble that's outside of the array that I happen to be giving the mouse location. So what if I want to check if this bubble is intersecting any other bubble? Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to do this. If unicorn dot intersects B. This is now saying, hey, I want this special bubble unicorn to check if it's intersecting anything in that array. Anything in that array. I just knocked this camera. <laughs> okay. Then if so, and by the way, what's convenient here is I have this, um, I already have this function change color, which I used in a previous video. So I can use, repurpose that function change color to if it's intersecting that bubble to change its color. So let's change its color to 100, otherwise uh, change its color back to zero. So what I'm doing is I'm saying if the unicorn intersects the bubble, it's got a different brightness than if it does not intersect that particular bubble. And look, you can see, <laughs> I guess I should make that brightness a little bit higher. So you can see here, right? There we go. So you can see this is working, but this is different than me checking all of these bubbles against each other. Hmm, how am I going to do that? So what I need to do is write, I actually don't want anything to do with this unicorn. So let's comment this unicorn out, but the unicorn served a purpose because it shows us right here that this is what I want to do. For every B in bubbles, Show it, move it, and then check if it intersects. And really a different way to write this that would have made more sense is this. And what I want to do is say, don't check just that unicorn, check every other B, every other bubble. So what if I had another loop in here? Right, there's another loop. Just look at this for a second, right? For every bubble, show it and move it, then Go through all the bubbles again and check if that bubble is intersecting any of the other ones. Whew. It's tricky. I feel like I need to just pause and breathe for a second. But this is new to you. This is this idea of a nested loop. And I feel like I want to go over to the diagram and I want to try to redo that diagram for a second. I think I've lost which pen was the good one. Let's try this again. I'm just going to have four bubbles, A, B, C, and D. I want to check, is A intersecting B, C, or D? Is B intersecting A, C, or D? Is C <laughs> intersecting A, B, or D? And is D intersecting A, B or C. Here's the thing though, even though this is what I want to check, I just sort of intuitively did something here, which is what I said is that I don't want to check if A is intersecting A, but really what I want to do code-wise is I want to do this. I want to have A check all four, then B check all four, then C check all four, then D check all four, but I want to make sure I ignore when it's checking against itself. And then, of course, we could optimize this even further, which maybe I'll do at the end of this video, right? If A is checking B, C, and D, B doesn't really need to check A again. But that's only for this particular case. There could be other instances where we want to check A versus B and B versus A, and that means something different. So let's come back over here and see what I mean here. So first of all, I want to make sure that B does not equal, does not equal other. So what I want to do is like, okay, I want to check if B is intersecting every other bubble as long as B isn't checking itself. So that, the problem is this actually isn't going to work. It's sort of going to work, but not going to work. 
uh, and I'll, I'll explain to you why. The, the logic here is quite sound in terms of the, the two loops, but the change color is a bit of a problem. So um, let's run this and see like, mm, I'm not seeing anything change color. Why not? Well, let me do something here. Let me at least, let's comment out this, this part. So what I want is I'm only going to change color. I'm never going to change back. So you can see what's going to happen now is any two bubbles that intersect each other. Come on, bubbles, you can do it. Ah, there we go. They change color. But as they separate, they stay. So this is an added layer of complexity that I probably should have anticipated when I started making this video. And in a way, I could stop here and there might be, but since we're doing this, I think we've got to solve this problem. I'm here, you're here, you could go on and do something else. If you want to solve this problem, how can I now have them turn off uh, when, they are, when they are not intersecting? So here's the thing. What I want to do is I need to decide, I can't decide whether I want to change the color to black or white right in here. And why is that? The reason is, let's consider this case where A and C are overlapping. And that loop, what it's doing is it's saying, is A intersecting, uh, oh, sorry, is A intersecting A? Well, no, don't change the color because they're equal. Is A intersecting B? Well, no, don't change the color because they're not intersecting. Is A intersecting C? Oh, yeah, change the color. Change the color, they're intersecting. Yay, change the color. Okay, oh, oh wait, we're not finished yet. Is A intersecting D? No, no, they're not. Change it back to black, <laughs> right? Because that else doesn't know that the previous one was intersecting. So this is an issue, right? So because I'm looping through with an else here, if unless it's the last one I happen to check, the, whole, the last one's gonna change it back to black. So what I actually need to do is do this kind of trick, and I'm sure there's a more elegant way of doing this, but just for right now I can say, uh, I'm gonna just say, uh, uh, let overlapping equals uh, false. So I'm gonna assume it's not overlapping anything. I'm gonna assume it's not overlapping anything. Then I'm gonna check all of them and if it's overlapping at least one, I'm going to say true. What's fun about this is I could actually like, the more it's overlapping, I could add up a number or something. I'm going to check if it's overlapping at least one, set overlapping equal to true. Once I'm done checking everything now, if, I'm, if I do get overlapping, then I can say b.changeColor255, otherwise b.changeColor255. Zero. So this is a little bit of a goofy piece of logic that's associated just with this particular scenario, but it's still, you know, the core idea here is that I have this nested loop. I want to check this bubble, every other bubble. Okay, so let's run this again, and you can see, and let me make the bubbles, let me make more of them. Let's make 20 of them. And you can see that if it's intersecting any other one, it is, it's lighting up. If it's not, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, 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 it's not lighting up. <laughs> so this is complete. Um, there are some things here to change. And I'm going to just talk them through for a second, and then I'll decide if I'm going to implement them. <laughs> so one is, is there a way, maybe it would make more sense for me to somehow, I think it would make more sense for me, ah, I, I kind of want to do this. For me to put this overlapping variable inside the bubble object itself. Why can't it keep track of that? And it could keep track of that, and based on it, it could just call the show function with the appropriate, the show function itself could set its color, potentially. So that way I get rid of all this extra gobbledygook code over here, and I'm left still just with the b.intersects other. So that's one thing I could do. The other thing that would be interesting to try is, um, is to see if I could reduce the amount of checks, right? By just checking A versus B, C, D, and then just B versus C and D, C just versus D. That's actually all I need. And that could actually be, it doesn't really matter in this case, but <laughs> I, I really should finish this video. But so, okay, so those are two things. One of those things, probably what I would really want to do and need to do is go back to having the index. So as an exercise that you might like to try is rewrite this code with 
an I counter and a J counter. But what you'll notice is you can start the J with that. Man, I'll do that. Ah, see if you try this. Write a lot of comments that I should make another video to solve this, and maybe I will. But um, so that would be interesting to look at, right? You need to go get the counter because you can start. If I is for all of the bubbles I'm checking, I can start J wherever I left off. The other thing that's kind of an issue here is the following. Let's go make, let's make these bubbles really small. And let's, let's add 200 of them. That looks like it's working. Let's add 2,000 of them. Okay. It cannot even come close. Let's, it's, it's, let's add a uh, 1,000 of them. Let's just go back to that. So that was too extreme. So you can see how slow this is. Now, you might be thinking, oh, it's just slow to draw 1,000 things, which is true, but let me show you something here. What if I take out this whole thing about uh, intersection? It's got no problem animating a thousand bubbles. The problem is, in this algorithm, if I have to check every bubble against every other bubble, if there are three bubbles, that's nine checks. If there are 10 bubbles, that's 100 cycles, 100 checks. If there are 100 bubbles, that's 10,000. I'm just doing my math there for a second. Look, this went up by a factor of 10, but this went up by a factor of 100. And with 1,000 bubbles, suddenly I have to do 1 million checks. So there are, there are ways around this, and there are algorithms for binning, or they have fancy names and quad trees. And someday I'll have a link in this video description to some tutorials where I go over how to make this stuff more efficient. But one of the things you really got to watch out for is this every object check every other object is an n squared problem. As the number of bubbles increases, the number of computation cycles increases by the number of bubbles squared. So, um, so this is something you really do have to watch out for. This can get quite slow. And again, someday in this video's description, maybe I'll have a link to something which shows that more efficiently. All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to be. At, I'm going to stop at the end of this video. And uh, if some of these little tidbits and things are kind of interesting and important, I will do them in a follow-up video. Okay, this video is not over because I have noticed some, uh, a pretty fundamental mistake here where in both of these loops, right, for B of bubbles, where B is a variable that stands in for every bubble in the array, just like if I'm going to say for let I equal zero, I is less than bubbles.length, if I'm doing a loop like this, um, I really need to declare that variable B, otherwise it could be um, it could, it, it, mistakes, bad things could happen. So I should have let be here, and then of course I'm doing this again here. I should say let, uh, let other of bubbles there. So hopefully you didn't spend too much time screaming at your viewing device um, while you're watching the video, uh, and there it is at the end here. Okay, thanks very much.